Hello everyone! Happy almost weekend! I hope you had fun with our last lesson about dinosaurs. Today we're changing things up and we are going to talk about our newest Bible hero. I'm excited to introduce him to you. We are also going to do a little bit of work on sight words. That is one thing along with your reading that if you do just a little bit every day working on sight words um, when we get back to school and next year, those words will already be in your memory and it will be easy peasy um, when they ask you to remember those. So let's dive in. Are you guys ready? Perfect. These are our sight words that we're going to work on today. Take a look and see if you can read them yourself. What is this word? This is one of those words that's also a letter. What is it? Yes, I, letter I, and the word I. It has to be capitalized because it's talking about yourself. Our next sight word is easy peasy, and it is letter A, which is also a word, yes, the word A. And then two more, I, N, N, and I. <clears throat> Those are kind of the top of our sight word list and they're pretty easy. So I thought maybe we could work on making a sentence out of a couple of those. So hmm, I wonder what I could talk about with the word I. Hmm, I think I have it. I'm going to write I has to be capitalized. Not only is it the beginning of the sentence, but I'm talking about myself. I am in my house. That's a good sentence. Take a look. I am in my house. I not only used I, but I also kind of squeaked in that second sight word in. Notice my finger spaces. Now, when you are writing some sight word sentences, remember your words don't have to be spelled like an adult would spell them. Kid spelling would be perfect. So, right above this, let's see if we can come up with kid spelling for house. If you remember right, we're hoping for three different sounds. So, what sound is that? Hmm, yes, H. Ow. Hmm, let's break it apart. Ah, ah, ah. Mm, probably, I know that it's OU blend, but how about we put an O? Ouse. I definitely hear that last sound. S. Perfect. If your word turned out like this, that's perfect. That's exactly what you um, need to do. And it's a great way to build confidence. You don't need to have the, all the correct, like the silent E here and the blending of the OU. You don't need to have those in there quite yet. That'll come with um, with knowledge of more blends and things like that in upper grades. Now what could be my second sentence? I wrote a sentence with I and in. Hmm. Now to start with A. If I put A at the beginning of a, a sentence, does it need to be capitalized? Yes. What about if it's in the middle of a sentence? No, it does not need to be capitalized. But I'm going to start mine at the beginning. So I'm going to say capital A. A. Hmm. A. Dog. Brought. It. Home. There's my sentence. Very easy. And I was able to use two different sight words. The word a and the word it. A and it. This is a big word. Let's kid spell this one. B -er -ot. Hey, I think I hear even more than three sounds. Let's sound it out. B, 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 r, r, br, a, o, br. I heard four sounds. Perfect. 
There are my sight word sentences. Two sentences, four words. Is that something I can challenge you guys to do today? I have included your sight words list, your sight word lists. Um, I gave them out a little while ago during conferences, but if you don't have any, I attach them at the bottom of the email and they could be used as flashcards. I know flashcards are not something I'm really um, big on, but you can always play games with them, a memory game. Or for today's assignment, if you take the top four sight words, like Miss B did, and create sentences out of them using finger spaces, sounding out sounds, making sure your sight words are spelled correctly, and putting periods at the end. That would be a great way to um, not only work on writing skills, but also your sight words. So that would be great. Now on to our newest Bible hero. If you think back, we had just finished up learning about the life of Moses, and he was pretty amazing. He not only parted the Red Sea, he, um, what else did he do? He went up to my, Mount Sinai and brought down the Ten Commandments. Well, eventually, Moses did pass away. And the next person to kind of be called by God to help lead God's people to the promised land was a man named Joshua. And he too has a very cool story. It's a story of fear and faith. And I think you're really going to like it. Attached to the email is another short movie. It's one of our favorite um, beginning of the Bible uh, movies. About 25 minutes and it really does a good job of walking you through the life of um, Joshua and kind of showing you where he fits between Moses and um, what, what he did for God's people. What he was asked to do by God and how he faithfully, um, how he faithfully uh, did that. Attached also to your um, to the email is an entire Joshua packet, and it has a mini reader that it's not kid too kid friendly, so it's going to have to be something that <clears throat> mom and dad or bigger brother and sister can read to you. But there's a mini reader, there's a craft idea, and there's some other worksheets. So my suggestion is go ahead and open up that link and take a look at what you want to print out and um, kind of pick and choose or you can print the whole thing either way would be just fine so the life of Joshua I look forward to talking about him again but now we're gonna finish this is kind of a short video um, with our book that we started we were hearing about are two characters in the book um, Dinosaurs Before Dark. It's a magic tree house and if you remember right we had a brother and sister and they had found a tree house and Jack and Annie had gone up to the tree house and we were trying to figure out the tree house is filled with books and we were trying to figure out um, first of all if you would have gone up there and what are all those books are what are they what are they there for so we pick it up in chapter two are you guys ready chapter two the monster ja and remember um, chapter books don't have pictures on every page so use your imagination jack crawled through a hole in the treehouse floor wow the treehouse was filled with books books everywhere very old books with dusty covers and new books with shiny bright covers Look, you can see far, far away, said Annie. She was peering out the treehouse window. Jack looked out the window with her down below where the tops of the other trees were the tops of the other trees. In the distance, he saw the Frog Creek Library, the elementary school park. Annie pointed in other directions. There's our house, she said. Sure enough. There was their white wooden house with a green porch. Next door was their neighbor's black dog, Henry. He looked very tiny. Hi, Henry, shouted Annie. Shh, said Jack. We're not supposed to be up here. 
He glanced around the treehouse again. I wonder who owns all these books, he said. He noticed bookmarks were sticking out of many of them. Hmm. I like this one, said Annie. She held up a book with a castle on the cover. Here's a book about Pennsylvania, said Jack. He turned to the page with the bookmark. Hmm, I wonder who left all those bookmarks. No more pictures, or no pictures on this either, so use your imagination. <clears throat> hey, there's a picture of Fog Creek in here, said Jack. It's a picture of these woods. Oh, here's a book for you, said Annie. She held up a book about dinosaurs. A blue silk bookmark was sticking out of it. Hmm, let me see it. Jack set down his backpack and grabbed the book from her. You look at that one, and I'll look at this book about castles, said Annie. No, we better not, said Jack. We don't know whose books these belong to. But even as he said this, Jack opened the dinosaur book to where the bookmark was. He couldn't help himself. He turned to a picture of an ancient flying reptile. <gasps> ah, Pteranodon! Hmm, I wonder if that's going to give us a hint as to our very last dinosaur we'll talk about. He touched the huge bat-like wings. Wow, whispered Jack. I wish I could see a pteranodon for real. Jack studied the picture of the odd-looking creature soaring through the sky. Ah! screamed Annie. What? said Jack. A monster! Annie cried. She pointed to the treehouse window. Stop pretending, Annie, said Jack. No, really, said Annie. Jack looked out the window. A giant creature was gliding about the treetops. He had a long, weird crest on the back of his head and a shiny beak and huge bat-like wings. It was a real-life pteranodon. The creature curved through the sky. He was coming straight towards the treehouse. He looked like a glider plane. The wind began to blow. Oh, here's a good picture. I see Jack peering out of the window of the treehouse, and I see the pteranodon. How did that happen? Are there pteranodons nowadays? I don't think so. I wonder, do you think they went back in time? The leaves trembled. Suddenly the creature soared up high into the sky. Jack nearly fell out of the window trying to see it. He does look like he's kind of sticking out far, doesn't he? The wind picked up. It was whistling now. The tree horse started to spin. What's happening? cried Jack. Get down, shouted Annie. She pulled him back from the window. The tree house was spinning faster and faster. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. He held on to Annie. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. Sunlight slanted through the window. There was Annie. The books his backpack? The treehouse was still high up in an oak tree. Hmm. But it wasn't the same oak tree. Oh, what do you think happened? I can't wait to continue to read. I wonder, my prediction, and remember a prediction means a guess about what's going to happen in the story. I think that maybe they went back in time. I think that book maybe allowed them to travel back and actually see real dinosaurs. Wouldn't that be cool? I wonder if that would be something you'd want to do. I will see you next lesson. I hope that you are having fun with these. And as always, if you do something that you really, really are proud of, which you should be proud of everything you do because you guys are amazing. Your um, moms and dads, brothers and sisters, whoever has a phone can take a picture and um, upload it to an email and I can see it. So um, I will see you next time. Have a wonderful weekend and we will see you on Monday. Bye.